A JavaScript's date constructor helps with parsing, managing, and displaying dates. There are a few ways to make a date object. The quickest is to make the object for the current date and time. So here's how you would do that. Do var v1, just do new date, and I can log that to see what that's going to look like. Just do to string to convert it to a string. And then if I run that, you'll see in the console the date down below. Now I can also convert that to a date string. And then it's just going to show, if you look in the console, it's just going to show the date. Or I can do to time string. If I run that in the console, you can see it's just going to show the time. Or I can do to UTC string and it's going to show it without my time zone in GMT. So if you look back to the two time string, it's always gonna show the time zone of the browser. So I am in the uh, EDT time zone, so that's what it's gonna show the time in. Okay, we can also make a, the object a different way. So we can pass in the year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So let's try that. Yeah, in JavaScript, the months start at zero. So um, January is going to be zero. February is going to be one. March is going to be two. So all the dates are just off by one. And here, I didn't even have to put two string. You can just log the, the date, and it's going to give this format. But if we do two, two string, it's going to be a little more readable. And you can see we have the month as one, and then it's showing February. Like I was saying, it starts at zero. Now we can also create dates with a, a time value. So we can do new date. And then we're going to just insert a time value such as, and this is a time that's the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. And that's, that's when, you, when you're entering a time value, that's what that time, that number is. Okay, let's try a bigger number there. And I'm going to run that. Okay, so you can insert these milliseconds and you can see the date down below. Now, the last way you can create a date is with a date time string. There are a lot of options for that, so let me show you a few. So you can put in a date in a lot of different formats. So I'm going to try it this way. You can see I have the month, day, year, and time. And we can console.log that. I run that. You can see below. Well, here's a, a few other ways you can change this. You can just put just the numbers, 2015, dash 03 for the month and then the, the day at the end and then we can do it that way or we can only put the year and month we don't need the day right here or we can just put the year or we can do it in a different format we can do it with some slashes like that so that's the month and the day and then you can put the year after it or you can actually type out the, the month, so we can do Mar 25. Now with this, the month and the day can be in any order. Also, you, the commas don't matter. You can put commas or you can not put commas, or you can spell out the month completely. So it takes a lot of different formats here. And so after you've created a date, you can, um, there's a lot of methods to get information. Console.log, and then I'm gonna do get date. We got to pass in the date that we're going to get the date from. So d four dot get date. And look at the the console. The date when you do get date is going to be the day of the month. So it's going to be twenty five. Or you can do get day, which is going to be the weekday as a number. So six means it's going to be the sixth day. Sunday starts at zero, and then the sixth day is going to be Saturday. There's a lot of other ones you can do. Get full year, 
get hours, get milliseconds, get minutes, get month, get seconds, get time. Yeah, if you do get time, it's going to be the milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. For all those things I just mentioned, there are setters. So we have the getters and setters. So we can do um, d4 uh, set year, and we can set a new year. So I'm going to set that to 2020. And now we can do console.log d4.toString. And we run that. Oh, I forgot to put the parentheses at the end. Okay, so we have the the day has a new year now. You can set the day, the full year, the hours, the milliseconds, the minutes, anything like that. And now lastly, I'm just going to show you how you can use the date object to figure out elapsed time. So let's do a program here. First, we have to figure out what the, the start time is. So I'm just going to create a new date. And then we are going to um, call a function here, which I'm just going to call do something, which I have to create in a minute here. Now we have to get the end time. So what's, what's the time after we've done something? And then we just have to figure out the elapsed time between the start and the end time. So var elapsed. So we're going to use one of those getters, get time. And we're going to subtract start dot get time the time from the end time minus the start time is going to be the elapsed time console dot log the the elapsed time and this is going to be in milliseconds so now we just have to create the do something function and the point of this is just to do something that takes time here so we're going to create a for loop and we're just going to do some number in here while i is less than that number, we're going to just increment i. And this for loop isn't going to have anything in it. So let's run this and see what happens. And we have an error. So let's see. Oh, I forgot to put my curly braces after the for loop. That was a pretty easy thing here. Okay, let's run that again. Okay, so you can see that took one millisecond. You can see at the bottom there. So let's create, add a few more zeros to that and run that again. And now we're down to 15 milliseconds. You can see that's 15 milliseconds. If I add a few more zeros, the elapsed time was 1,235 milliseconds. So that's the way you can just use the date object to find out elapsed time. Okay, thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.